The definition of true health and well-being is undergoing some remarkable changes. It's not just that more of us are becoming more involved in our own well-being, it's the new ways we're finding to do so. One of those new ways is making natural remedies a bigger part of how we stay healthy. To get some expert advice on making the most of these, I went to the headquarters of the American Botanical Council in Austin, Texas to spend some time with Mark Blumenthal, the council's founder and executive director. If I were to start an herbal medicine cabinet, the first herb I would have and I recommend for everyone is aloe vera. It's a historically rich plant with lots of tradition and there's probably no better way to show the healing power of plants than to take a leaf of an aloe vera plant, cut it and put that gel right on a burn or a cut and stop the, uh, the pain almost immediately. One of the things I would recommend for everyone's medicine cabinet would be some ginger. Ginger is a very useful herb because it's great for indigestion and also can be used for motion sickness. So anybody who has travel sickness, it's a great herb to have and, I, and it tastes great. Taking garlic over time, some research shows, it can actually reduce the buildup of plaque in arterial walls and or reverse plaque buildup, thereby reversing atherosclerosis. For sore throat, for immediate relief, the herb that is approved by the government is an herb called slippery elm. It's the inner bark of the elm tree that has a nutty flavor that's really delicious because it has this mucilaginous material in it that when added uh, to liquid starts expanding and that adds a mechanical benefit when you swallow this stuff, especially in the lozenge so it slowly goes down, it coats the inflamed mucous membranes of the larynx and that basically gives temporary relief of the inflammation of sore throat. So basically the Food and Drug Administration still approves slippery elm as an over-the-counter medicine, as safe and effective as a demulcent, which means that it has a soothing effect on inflamed mucous membranes. Elderberry syrup or elderberry extract, the beautiful purple-blue elderberries uh, from Europe uh, make a wonderful rich syrup, especially when they're based in some honey or sugar water, depending on how the syrup is made. Kids like it, and it's a good vehicle to put some of your other herbal extracts in because it's tasty and yummy and also has some immunostimulating effects, especially useful for some upper respiratory tract infections associated with colds and flu. Feverfew is a European herb in the daisy family. Feverfew actually reduces not only fevers, but uh, the recent research in the last 20 years suggests that feverfew is safe and effective for migraines in some people. I've known people who've taken it and not gotten any results. I've known people who've found it uh, a lifesaver. We're finding that over the last 30, 40 years, herbal science based on historical traditional use has gone to another level. We're finding out by using pharmaceutical, te pharmaceutical technology that you can make high quality extracts for new indications, new uses that are not consistent with the historical traditional uses. At the same time, we're also finding more and more people who recognize that it's, when you have an upset stomach, a simple cup of chamomile tea or peppermint tea does the trick. And you don't need a fancy standardized uh, powerful extract for that any more than you need a pharmaceutical drug. Well, people generally use herbs for one basic reason, and that's because they work. The historical and modern scientific evidence is very clear about that. But, Mark also says, the evidence shows that medicinal herbs need to be used carefully, especially by women who are pregnant or anyone with hypertension, diabetes, or heart disease. You know, self-medication presupposes self-education. People need to educate themselves about the benefits and the potential risks on these herbal preparations and use them accordingly. They need to read the labels and use the products as directed and as suggested by the manufacturer. And they need to understand that although most of the herbal preparations in the marketplace are very safe and most of them are very gently acting, sometimes in certain situations, pregnancy, hypertension, heart disease, uh, diabetes, certain people should either avoid using an herb or use it only under professional guidance. To help us all become better informed about the healing benefits of herbs, the American Botanical Council provides information in a variety of forms and also posts it on their website at herbalgram.org. 
or to find out more about Healing Herbs, you can simply come to the Healing Quest website and we'll have information for you there along with a link to the American Botanical Council.